Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and I'm so excited about tonight's topic. The topic in this broadcast is how to turn, it's five keys, actually. I'm going to give you five keys to turn weak faith into strong faith. And the reason that this is so important is because so many times, many of us, you know, we've got different things going on in our lives, and sometimes you just you just, you feel so weak that you just feel like you can't even pray or you don't even know how in that moment. And then there's other times that you feel really strong and you always know what to do. I see you guys jumping on right now. So welcome, welcome. And we're going to dive right in because I have a lot to cover, you know, and it, I'd like to say in a short period of time, and I just want to make sure that I give you everything. So I see you guys jumping on. Welcome, welcome. So Paul said that he fought the good fight. You and I have to fight the good fight of faith, right? But again, sometimes it's difficult to do that. And again, understanding, and I say again because I spoke about this last week, but talking about how faith is actually a force. It's a substance, right? Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's not hope itself, but its faith is actually the substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So again, it's not the hope itself. That's the force or the substance. The hope is the beginning of it, right? You get a picture. It's something that you're hoping for, but then you have to put faith behind it. And I'm, I'm going to cover this. So faith is, you know, it's knowing that you have what you asked for or that the command that you've, you know, given or spoken based on your God-given authority has, you know, been released and is set in motion to accomplish the thing that it was sent to. Mm, praise God. So first, um, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith, not by sight, right? So the thing is, we have to walk by faith. I'm just giving you a, a prelude right here before we jump into the five keys. But we have to walk by faith because this is what pleases the Lord, right? And it's, it's not always easy. Like I said, you've got to build your faith. So how are you going to build your faith if, um, you know, if all you're seeing around you, and, and this isn't all the time, but there are times that, you know, and some of you may be in a place where all you're seeing is, you know, loss or defeat or discouragement or lack, right? How are you going to build that faith? Okay, well, we know that faith comes by hearing. We've heard it over and over and over. The scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I'm telling you, I got the most awesome revelation on this today. And some of you may may already know this and you might listen to me and go, well, duh, <laughs> you know. But honestly, did you ever think when you hear that scripture or read that scripture that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? Do you ever think to yourself, because I know I did, I would say, well, Lord, why don't we just say faith comes by hearing the word of God, right? Have you ever thought that? Comment if you've ever thought that because I have, right? But this is, and then the Lord showed me this today. And he said, faith comes, the reason that it's worded that way, faith comes by hearing. That's number one. But faith, faith in God's word comes by hearing or faith in deception, faith in the wrong thing comes by hearing because faith is what you really truly believe in your heart. That's your faith. That's, that's, it, it, faith is belief. It's what you truly, truly believe in your heart. That is your faith, the faith that you have, right? Okay, so somebody just said, I don't understand so much. Okay, well, this is going to help you. So Jesus said, right, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, or that's what the scripture says. So Jesus said, let those who have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying, right? So faith comes by hearing. Again, faith in God's word comes by hearing or faith in something else. Wrong believing also comes by hearing. But faith in God comes by hearing God's word. So I hope that makes sense, right? So faith in good or bad, I know I'm repeating myself, but remember, repetition is the mother of all success, and the Word of God repeats 
over and over and over. So, right, Jesus said, you know, the same thing so many times. God says the, so, same, the same thing so many times because he really wants us to get it. So, and just innately, you know, I do the same thing. I'm, I'm a teacher slash preacher, and this is, it's just how I teach. So, in any event, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus said, let those who have ears to hear, hear right? Okay. This is, this was really great because God answered my question about why don't you just say faith comes by hearing the word of God? Because you could have faith in something that is totally wrong, totally a wrong belief. But how did that, how did you come to believe that? You heard it somewhere. Faith in good or bad comes by hearing, but faith in God comes by hearing the word of God. Okay, so I think I slammed that, you know, enough. So <laughs> the God kind of faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So if you're really hearing, right, what the spirit is saying, you're going to have faith in God. All right, in Matthew 13, nine through 16, and remember, I've got to give you the word because I, I cannot just give you my own opinion. That would count for nothing. It's the word of God that brings change. And transformation. So Matthew 13, 9 through 16, Jesus said, For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, right? Hear what the Spirit is saying, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Mm. Hearing the Word of God is so important because that's how you're going to get that faith in your heart. Okay. But blessed, Jesus said, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Because they hear what? They, they listened to Jesus. They heard what the Spirit was saying, you know, through him. So, number one, in order to turn weak faith into strong faith, key number one, you've got to hear. You've got to hear the Word of God. That's number one after you get saved or born again. And if you haven't, you know, been saved, which means being born from above where God sends his spirit, that the spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit to live inside of you. That's Galatians 4, 6. If you haven't received him yet as Lord and you want to do that, I'll do that with you at the end of this broadcast. So hang on. I don't want anybody to be left out and neither does the Lord. Okay. So you've got to understand that when you feel weak, you've got to build your faith. And the way you're going to do that, key number one, hearing the word of God. Faith faith in God comes by hearing the word of God. Okay. And faith is the victory. Faith, literally, we know it's a force. It's a substance. It's the victory that overcomes the world. Why? Because anything that the world could throw at you, lies, you know, anything, you know, people talking bad about you, this and that. If you have faith in God for real, you are going to have a confidence in the Lord, you're going to have a rest that the world can't even imagine. They just, they don't even know how that even is possible, right? But you'll know. You will know. Okay. So faith is literally a force. It pulls like gravity for good or for bad. Okay. So make sure that you're, you know, you put your faith in the Lord, in his word. Okay. And remember too that what you believe in your heart, that's your faith. What you believe in your heart and speak out of your mouth, that's what you're going to have. How do I know that? Because Jesus said it. It's a spiritual law. When Jesus said something, that's it. Truth. It's in motion. Jesus said, according to Mark, right, 11.23, he said, "What if you, if you speak to the mountain, actually, I'm going to get to that, but it's a spiritual law. So I want to encourage you to read for yourself. Mark chapter 11, it has been absolutely life-changing for me. So I gave you key number one, which was hearing the word of God. Key number two, to turn your faith, right? Turn weak faith into strong faith is speak the word of God. So you've got to hear the word of God to believe and then you speak. Woo! This is so powerful because the word of God is alive and active. Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is alive and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So it, what does a, a sword, 
right? The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it cuts, it divides even to the joints and the marrow, the, the scripture says, and it will even reveal the intentions of your heart. The word of God will pierce your heart if you allow it to. And you really allow God to have his way. When you read his word, you'll see what you really believe. And remember, and, and you know, it's a great idea to read the word out loud. And this way, you'll actually be hearing yourself saying it. And that is so powerful. Okay, so you got to speak the word of God. Jesus defeated Satan in the wilderness. And every other time, how? With a word. With a word. You can't just think it, though. You have to speak. You have to speak what you believe in your heart and what you speak, good or bad, that's what you're going to have. It's a spiritual law. So make sure that you load yourself in God's word, the truth of God's word. Listen to what Jesus said here. I always say this and I love it. The lesson is in the fig tree. That's Mark chapter 11. Make sure you read it and part of Matthew as well. G where Jesus curses the fig tree. Now he did not say to the, to the fig tree, I curse you fig tree. No, he told that fig tree that he would, that no one would ever eat from it again, right? That was cursing the tree. So basically if you talk bad to someone or you, you know, you say some negative things to people and they receive, they receive it, you just curse them. Seriously. Anytime you speak bad about someone or bad to someone, you're cursing them. Now, if they are a believer, they don't have to receive that curse and be careful because that curse can turn right around and come back to you. Okay. So just be careful of touch not God's anointed. Oof. Praise the Lord. Jesus curses the fig tree. Okay. So in Mark 11, verse 12, the next morning as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Verse 13, he noticed a fig tree in full leaf a little way off. So he went over to see if he could find any figs but there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. So it was too early in the season for fruit, but he's the creator of the universe, right? That was Jesus. He's Lord. That tree should have been producing some figs, right? So, but it didn't. Then Jesus said to the tree, may no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard Jesus say it. Mm. Okay, so check it out. Then in verse 20 to 24, the next morning as they passed by the fig tree he had cursed, the disciples noticed that it had withered from the roots up. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered and, and died. Okay, and then I, I like Matthew's version of what happened next. In Matthew 21, 21 to 22, Jesus said, I mean, it says in verse 20, when the disciples, Matthew 20, I'm sorry, to 22. When the disciples saw this, they marveled and asked, how did the fig tree wither so quickly? Jesus said, truly, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only will you do what was done to this fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, right? Keywords, it will happen if you believe it. If you believe, he said, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only will you do what I did to this fig tree, but you'll be able to say to the mountain, be lifted up and it'll happen. Bottom line. Oh, anyway, and then he said, if you believe, you will receive whatever you asked in prayer. Now, the whole whatever, you know, thing, if you're asking the Lord for something, Obviously, you, you want to make sure that it's in line with his will because the scripture says that when you pray in accordance with God's will, you know he hears you. And if he hears you, you have what you asked for. Isn't that beautiful? Praise God. And you can read that in the chapter of John. Um, check out John 14 and 15. Mm, so beautiful. So now you know that what you believe and speak is what you're going to have, what you truly believe. Listen, sometimes people say, I was believing, was believing. No, believed. When you pray, believe that you have already received. Okay, that's what Jesus said. What you truly believe in your heart and you speak, it's a spiritual law. You're going to have what you say because that's the way it is. You, at, once you believe it and you speak, for good or bad, you are putting that thing in motion. So be careful of what you 
the words you speak. Um, they are literally life and death. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life is literally in the power of the tongue of your words, right? All right. So we have to get our eyes off of the situation and on to the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay. Ephesians 6, 17 says, and I love this because Ephesians 6 talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Read it. It's so good. But verse 16 says, in addition to all of this, and he's talking about putting on the armor of God, take up the shield of faith, the shield of faith. That means your faith in God, your resting in God is literally, it's a force, but it's a shield. And it says it will quench. It will stop every fiery dart of the enemy. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. It says in verse 16, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which with, with which you can extinguish. Well, in another translation, it says it will stop. It will quench every fiery dart of the enemy, right? Or all the flaming arrows um, of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, it says. You know, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just super passionate, super passionate. Okay, so, and remember, if Christ by the Holy Spirit is in you, you can do all things because Christ in you gives you strength, right? So key number three, first we had faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith in God, that is, comes by hearing the word of God. Number two, you have to speak the word. These are keys I'm sharing to turn weak faith into strong faith. Okay, number three, pray in the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that means we're praying in tongues. Now, some of you may have never prayed in tongues before. Maybe you don't truly understand what all that is about. I don't have time to go into it on this broadcast. However, there is a video that I did on YouTube and I recommend that you go back and watch it. It's called Understanding the Role of the Holy Spirit. Just go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Lisa Buldo. Just put my name in and then search um, or just go YouTube, uh, Lisa Buldo, go to YouTube and in the search, write Lisa Buldo dash Understanding the Role of the Holy Spirit and it will come right up. And that is a great video for you to watch because I will take you through, you know, uh, how to be baptized in, in the Holy Spirit and you can start praying in tongues. And it's so important. Paul, the Apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than all y'all, right? Because when you pray in tongues or pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is praying through you. Your Spirit and the Holy Spirit are one, one together. If Jesus is your Lord, 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, he who is joined to the Lord or united with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So the Holy Spirit and your spirit is one. So as you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit is actually praying through you and you are praying out his perfect will. Now, your mind won't understand what you're saying. So you might be like, okay, but what, then how does it benefit me? You can ask the Lord for the interpretation but just know that when you're praying in the spirit, a lot of times you, the Lord will just show you things. A lot of times when I'm praying in the spirit, the Lord just shows me things and I'm like, whoa. And then I know what I was praying about, but you have to know that's your prayer language between you and God. It's very, very powerful. And the, the devil does not know what you're saying. So it's very, it's a weapon. The praying in the spirit is absolutely a weapon. And if you, if you're in some kind of situation, you pray in the spirit until you feel a peace come over you. And sometimes, you know, it's even been where, where if you don't know what to pray, like you just don't have words because you're just upset or you feel too weak, but you know how to, you know, you just start praying in the spirit. You just start making sounds to God from your belly, right? Your mind's not going to stand. You, you just start making syllables. Again, go and watch that video. And it's so powerful because a lot of times I've even like, like groaned, like, oh, like, you know, but then in a little while, the peace just comes. Like you might just start off speaking syllables and then all of a sudden you have groanings and then the Lord shows you something and you just keep praying in the spirit and boom, until you get peace. And then you know that you've won in the spirit, whatever was going on. Oh, it's so good. Okay, 
So that was key number three. Okay, and Romans 8.25 to 8.27 says, um, okay, this is talking about what I just spoke about. Romans 8, verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it patiently. Verse 26, in the same way, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness, right? So when you're feeling weak and you're upset and you just feel like you can't even pray, pray in the Holy Spirit. It says, for we do not know how we ought to pray, right? It, the, right? The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans too deep for words. Mm, that has happened to me many, many times. And he who searches our hearts knows, meaning the Lord knows the mind of the Spirit. He searches our hearts, but he knows the mind of the Spirit. He's one with the Holy Spirit, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints. That's you and me. Born again, you're a saint. You're not a sinner any longer, right? It, and it says right here, the Spirit intercedes for us, for the saints, according to the will of God. So that tells you right there when you pray in the Spirit, you are praying God's perfect will. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? That's the word of God. And that was Romans 8, 25 to 27. Praise the Lord. So again, if you've never spoken tongues or you don't really understand it, please go Go and watch my video on YouTube called Understanding the Role of the Holy Spirit. It will bless you greatly. Okay, so key number four, to turn weak faith into strong faith. Praise the Lord out loud. Oh my gosh. When your faith feels weak and you just, you just don't even have words for your situation, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord because the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. That's Psalm 22, 3 says, right? The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Praise is a weapon of warfare. Let me tell you something. The devil doesn't want to be anywhere near where the Lord Jesus Christ is being praised. When you're just in your, just feeling discouraged or, or something's happened and you're just, you just feel like you can't even pray. Sacrifice of praise. Oh, Lord. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I don't understand, but Lord, I praise you. Lord, I know your word is true. And let me tell you something. As you just start praising him, again, you can't think it. Do it out loud. I'm telling you, the devil will run. He doesn't want to be anywhere where the Lord is being praised because it's like he's being hit with a baseball bat. Ugh. You are crushing the enemy every time you praise the Lord Jesus and magnify and lift his name. I'm telling you. It's the truth. Okay, awesome. How do you think the walls of Jericho came down? With a shout. Rah, right? You got to shout to the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are good. Thank you, Lord, that you protect my family. Thank you, Lord, that I have the victory. I am more than a conqueror. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You've given me authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm me. I'm telling you, when you just start, whoosh, you will build up and that weak faith all of a sudden is strong and then you can go and attack that thing even in english like speak that god given authority that he's giving you and crush the devil crush that situation mm. jesus said i've given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you but things do harm us sometimes because we don't use the authority that he's given us, right? So you want to make sure that you're using the authority. Oh my gosh, the word, the authority. Okay, and key number five, to turn weak faith into strong faith. Get another prayer warrior to stand with you. You know, I, I had a call yesterday, or not a call, but um, I received a text yesterday from someone and he said that his son was in the hospital and he, he just didn't feel like his faith was just strong enough. Like he felt he was just so consumed and wrapped up with the situation with his, his son, you know, and that's understandable when something catches you and you're not prepared for it, right? I mean, just come on. Yes. Yeah. Be gr great to be prayed up all the time. And yeah, technically we should be, come on, things happen. Sometimes you're caught off guard. That's why we need each other. That's why God has given us you know, other believers, strong, like-minded people that so we can pick each other up when the other one is down. And what I told this gentleman is I told him, I, I understand. 
I said, don't worry, just pray in the spirit and, and pray. I think I actually said, praise the Lord. When you just don't know what to do, praise the Lord. If you don't know how to pray in the spirit, praise the Lord. But go back and watch that video because you want to learn how to be, you know, how to, how to pray in the spirit. And that's being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I will walk you through that whole thing in that video. So I told him to pray, um, to just keep praising the Lord and to pray in the spirit. He said, I can do that. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to do that right away. And then today he gave me an update and said his son is home from the hospital. So praise God. But I, you know, and I did pray and it was, it was awesome because that's, you know, the Lord was showing me, we need each other. We need each other. I've been there before too. There's been times I'm just like, Lord, but remember when you're feel like you're at rock bottom, just praise the Lord and pray in the spirit two very very important things and then as you start praising the lord you will get stronger you will get stronger and as you pray in the spirit you will get stronger and you just you start making declarations lord i thank you i thank you that you have given me authority i think i mean this is the time this is what you do this is how you build yourself up in your most holy faith david encouraged himself in the lord and we need to do the same ephesians six eighteen. you know after Paul talks about putting on the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6, make sure you read that. In Ephesians 6, 18, Paul says, pray in the spirit at all times. See, this is not my opinion. This is the word of God. I'm giving you the word of truth, the word of God. He said, pray in the spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and petition. Okay. Again, when you're praying in the spirit, you're not praying in English, but you can pray in both. But I say pray in the spirit when you don't know what to pray so the Holy Spirit can pray through you and intercede for you, right? Praying out the perfect will of God. Okay, and then Paul said, to this end, stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints. We need to lift each other up. We need, you need to understand how the kingdom of God works you know, and understand the authority that's been given to you, you know, Jesus is your Lord. So we're just about out of time, but if you need healing, make sure that you go to my website at lisaboldo.com and download the seven scriptures to stand for your healing, to receive your healing and to stand. It will come with a video on how to use those seven scriptures, okay? And then, um, you know, some of you may feel like you need more, you know, and if you need, for example, a breakthrough session, uh, you know, I do offer a limited amount of consultations um, each month. And I mean, I'm never going to charge anyone to take two minutes to pray. But if you need more, and, and many of you tell me that you do, I do offer breakthrough sessions. And you can find out more about that on my website. And that is for a fee because that's a consult, a coaching call. Okay. And so, if you want to learn how to live victoriously by walking in your kingdom authority, remember, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. And this is where you'll find all my videos in one place. You could just go on YouTube and just, you know, youtube.com forward slash Lisa Buldo. Just type in my name on YouTube and the channel will come up. And so for those of you who have never asked Jesus to be your Lord, but you want to, Let's do that right now, okay? Just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins, and I know that you died on the cross for me. I know that God the Father raised you on the third day, and you are alive now, and you live forever. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Teach me your ways and baptize me in your Holy Spirit so I can be on fire for you and a witness for you. Lord, I thank you right now and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen, woo! Now I say welcome to the family of God. Now your spirit's been made perfect. Now get into the word of God. Remember, you've got to know the word for yourself so you know how to fight you against the devil when he shows up and attacks you or your family or any situation. You know, you need to know how to fight and walk in that kingdom authority. You know, need to know how to live victoriously in relationships in every area of your life. If this has blessed you tonight, make sure that you share this on your social media, share this with people, and let's advance God's kingdom together. Thanks for watching the Victorious Life TV broadcast, 
and I will see you again really soon. All right, God bless you.